Well hello and welcome back to the channel. Well today is Wednesday the 22nd of December 2021 and I was up very early this morning uh, to a minus two frost and I was back over the woods where I shot last Friday as there's still some aggressive squirrels. So uh, there's a little message on here for some former military friends that should wake them up when they see that. And uh, straight on to some trail camera footage, as you can see, there's a bit of chasing around and then a bit of angry reaction from the squirrel to the pheasant there. And, and again, once more. So the, it's still the same group that I was hoping to get last week, but obviously they're still around. And on the subject of jays, um, I saw one last week and decided to let it go. But this week, I think there's the next clip coming up. There's four J's on one clip. So there's three there. There's actually one on the floor. And then number four comes in from 11 o'clock high. So I thought, well, that's a bit taking the mickey now uh, with the J's. There's a bit of nighttime footage. Uh, these are about 30 yards away. So I was quite impressed on how the Dissoon camera picked those up. So straight in with the footage. It's very, very dark. So what you're seeing is what I was seeing. So please don't write in saying we can't see anything because I couldn't see anything either. Uh, two bits of wood in front of you, the light coloured wood. The one on the left is the, the main tree. The one on the right is a little branch I put in there and there's actually a squirrel sat on the top of that at the moment. Take my word for it, you'll hear it go in a minute. So this was just after 8 o'clock and the official sunrise this morning here in the UK was 10 past 8 and I think it was less than two minutes before number two arrived on the feeder. Again, I apologise for how dark it is but um, it was really, really gloomy and I could only see these through a thermal. I couldn't see them with the naked eye from my hide 27 yards away. We'll go to the scope uh, camera in the moment. It's my Sony Handycam on the back of the Element Titan today. So this is 10 to 8. I've only just got set up. And the first visitor is here. Very, very gloomy. Sorry about that. That was me. Let's see if I can... Zoom in on that and focus on him. So you can see it's really struggling for the light at the moment. see that feeder with the naked eye it's still that dark so he is now very still at the bottom of the tree his mate in fact two mates are about 20 yards behind going up the trees chortling one's coming down he's probably going to come over and see where his mate's gone I'm not going to try and chase him around in a tree because that wouldn't make very nice viewing. So I'm just going to sit here now and see how long it takes. So my clock on here is saying 7.59 on this spotter. So we'll see how long their grieving process is. So that's now 8.01 and a friend has appeared. So the grieving process is all of two minutes. I'm sorry it's still very dark seeing what I'm seeing. I'll try and focus it a bit more. That's as good as it's going to get. I'll blot it in. Right, stick with the next bit. There's some very jerky and gloomy footage, but it is worth it, I can promise you. So 
So, while I was fiddling around with my scope, the fox has just come in and nicked the dead squirrel off from down underneath the tree. <laughs> I couldn't get him on film, it was just, he was off too quick before I could see it. But there you go, that's, <laughs> no wonder he didn't want to come back, he got his dinner. Cheek, he's still out, I can see him in the wood. And he's coming back. So remember this is really really dark and I'm struggling to find anything through the scope. I can see it on the... Yeah look there's another one there. Cheeky little bugger isn't he? That's the second one that's down there. Oh, he's just obviously heard me now. There we go. At least that's a bit of something on the film for you. Something interesting. At least he's done the tidying up for me, which is quite handy. There was one that was on the film last week, and now as you've seen on the introduction clips, there's actually four of them. So I think they're taking the mickey now. Gone in a cloud of feathers. Right, there's a fella over there. He's about 43 yards, according to my spotter. He's over to the left-hand side, and I could hear him chortling away up in that tree, so it didn't take long to find him. I say he's quite a long way away yet, so it could be quite a while before he or she decides to um, come across, but... Oops. That's four minutes to nine now, so let's see. See how long that, this process takes. This one's about 20 yards away to the left-hand side of my tree at the moment. There's another one up in the tree above where he's come from. Sorted him out. There's his mate. Oh, sorry, a bit of an earthquake. He's just sitting there in disbelief. So this is a bit of footage that I found whilst I was just going through uh, on my um, sort of GoPro camera. You see the fox down in the bottom of the, the picture. It, it was really dark and it, honestly this camera doesn't sort of show it how bad it was. But um, 
going back to that footage I did with the scope, I'm sorry it was so uh, jerky and blurry, but uh, I obviously didn't get any sort of warning he was coming in, so I had to make the best of it. Um, so I, I do again apologise for that, but it was just one of those things that um, I thought I'm going to get this and, and I'm not going to mess around with the film, just going to put it on exactly as it happened and then hopefully you can appreciate uh, what was going on uh, with me while I was in that tent. So matey boy's come back and he's nicked that first squirrel and he's got it in his mouth there uh, and this is when I first see him so I'm starting to squeak so he then takes the squirrel away to the edge of the wood drops it off and then comes back to where he thought he could hear the squeaking which is obviously me so if, if people that aren't sort of aware of uh, attracting foxes in you just make a kissing noise um, on the back of your hand or just with a pursed lips um, and it's the sort of thing that a, you, a fox will come in from hundreds of yards if you can hear that uh, so that was all I was doing in my little hide um, and obviously you'll see him he'll come back in a minute again very low down almost on the bottom of the screen but there he is look but say so that camera was obviously put there to look at the feeder and not look at the ground so there's a little bit of an interlude anyway so that's that one there I've just found and then over here I'm just going to struggle to focus on that there's another one there so we'll just see what happens now So there's two jays and a magpie in very close proximity to the feeder and then there's a pair of squirrels up to the left and you can hear one at the moment chortling away, not very happy, there's a pair of them in the tree. That's the rusty exhaust manifold nut sound that I think it sounds like. That's, that sounds coming off over to my sort of nine o'clock position, but there's two at eleven o'clock from where I'm sat in a tree. So there's obviously three around. I haven't set eyes on the third one. I've had to contend with the weather here this morning. It was minus one when I sat up here, so. I've constantly having to keep wiping lenses because they're getting condensation because obviously it's warmer in this tent than it is outside so that's again a bit of an enemy with um, trying to film stuff through lenses but, uh, hopefully the fox came out earlier um, he was actually 17 yards away from where he picked the squirrel up so we'll come back to this um, if and when they turn up on the feeder tree. So why there's just a pheasant there picking up the bits of corn on the ground, I thought I'd answer a question that was sent in in the very early hours of this morning. So I'm assuming uh, with it coming in at about a quarter to three this morning here in the UK and with a name like Catfish Weekly, I would hedge my bets on the, that you are in the United States. So your question was, how do I go about fitting the Sony Handycam to the back of my scope? Well, what you're going to need, um, Catfish, is a conventional circular eyepiece scope. So just a normal sort of a Hawk or a um, MTC, uh, just a scope that's got a round eyepiece, not, not um, something partial like a Swarovski or a Sig Sauer BDX because they've got lumps and bumps on them and you won't be able to put the Butler Creek style flip up lens cap on that. So once you've established that you've got the right size sort of scope, measure the diameter, go onto the website for Butler Creek or a similar company that make these flip up style uh, lens covers and order the corresponding lens cover. It's a tight fitting rubber mount and what you need to do then once you've got that is you remove the plastic flip up lens part and on the rubber mount you glue one side of a, a two piece 
step up, step down ring. Uh, obviously you need to get the, the right size for the lens cap uh, and also it would have to fit onto the front of your camcorder. Before you glue anything, give, it, give all the surfaces a rough up with some memory cloth and use a very good durable two-pack uh, resin type glue. Once you've glued, um, let's say you've put the male end on the attachment that's going to go onto the rear of your scope, put the female end, glue that onto the front of your camera, make sure it's dead in the centre of your lens, let all those glues go off and it's just a case of screwing that rubber mount um, onto the front of your camera and then pushing the camera onto the back of the, the scope lens turning the camera on and then you have to just center everything up um, make sure I always have mine on auto focus uh, so it can sort itself out um, but you want something that can focus on the subject and also focus on the crosshairs uh, and that's really it um, what I will do is I will do another um, very short video and show you the step up step down rings and also the type of resin glue that I've used but I won't add it on to the end of this video uh, I'll do a separate one when I get home later on so hopefully that will, will uh, solve the problem so in the meantime um, catfish look on the website sort out a flip up style rubber mounted lens for your scope make sure it goes on really tight if it isn't tight enough you can always put a bit of insulation tape around the end of your scope just to make sure it's really firm so uh, i'll let this pheasant carry on having his breakfast i'm gonna have a bit of breakfast and hopefully the two gray squirrels that are still yet to uh, emerge will come and um, make an appearance so we'll see you later on well, thanks again for watching. Uh, nothing else happened uh, on that feeder, so I finished my tea and breakfast and then came home to start editing this. So, uh, always happy to try and answer questions where I can. But anyway, have a great Christmas and I look forward to seeing you in the new year. Take care of yourselves. Cheerio!